Welcome back. Well, you've probably heard about cicadas and how this year there may be more of them than usual. And you may be concerned about your pets coming into contact with them, but don't worry. Joining me now is our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, who's going to inform us and reassure us about these bugs. Good morning, Dr. Visser. Good morning. You know, it's getting a lot of notoriety. The cicada. A lot of broods. noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but there's there, there's a lot of worry about what this is going to mean, not only for plants but for people. And I'm here to talk about then how uh, it relates to pets. But we'll talk about cicadas in general first. Okay. Well, I didn't. Remember, I was saying during a break. I never had heard of what a cicada was a couple right. of years ago, and someone was like, "They out here like cicadas," and I was like, "What are cicadas? So what are cicadas, and what makes this year's emergence of them uh, more significant than in the past?" Well, I think um, one of the things that's getting a lot of notoriety is that there's two different broods. Now there's several several different broods of cicadas and they are they come out in intervals and 13 17 year intervals but these are large flying insects they they do create a lot of buzz noise we hear them every year and I'll talk about that in a minute but brood 13 is a it comes out every 17 years and brood 19 actually emerges every 13 years but the unique thing is that this year both of those broods are going to be coming out at the same time and so we are just at the cusp uh -uh, of where this particular range is but these bugs have a hard Hard shell. They're kind of related to stink bugs and other hard shell bugs, um, and they're, they're, they have the characteristic red eyes, as you see right there, and they're about an inch, inch and a half long. So they're they're kind of large compared with other bugs we deal with. But only the males do that singing, high pitched sound, and what they're actually doing is vibrating a membrane on their sides. Now there are annual cicadas, and so you hear those every year, but those are on a two to five year cycle. But the periodic ones only come out every 13 to 17 years. And their life cycle is in the ground. A lot of people think these bugs themselves are in the ground, but it's not the adults. It's rather the nymph stages that are in the ground. And uh, through an unusually long development cycle, that's what, what the difference is. And these nymph uh, stages are eating juices and sap from plant roots. And there's actually seven different named broods of cicadas in the U.S. But this is the first time that both 13 and 19 emerged together since 1803. Uh -uh. And this year marks uh, the year that all seven are going to be out at some point or in different parts of the country. But these kind of overlap in this particular area. And it's not going to happen again until 2037. But again, that's before the next eclipse. But I don't think anybody's going to be driving uh, very just, far to go and see this. You're just describing them, and they just sound like the walking dead of bugs. Like, just rise <laughs> from the ground, well, like alive. two broods. Uh, <laughs> when, um, when can we expect them to be out? You know, um, the emergence is anywhere from April to June. But um, we're at the higher latitude, so it'll probably be a little bit later in May. But because everybody's hearing about this and worrying about it, we need to make sure that people are aware. But then they, they hang out probably for four to six weeks from the time that they emerge. Now this map here shows the two different um, broods that are out there. 13 is the one that is in blue up there and then 19 is the one that's in red. Wow. There's a little bit of overlap in central Illinois but you see at the very top there how the blue area reaches over into northern Indiana where we are. That's what puts us in the area where these cicadas may be. Now it's, uh, the numbers are, are going to vary. They'll probably be more intense uh, there in Illinois and in Missouri but that's something uh, uh, that people should be aware of that we are definitely in that uh, particular area. All right, besides not being the best things to look at, how do they actually affect uh, pets? Yeah, let's get to why, why we're here in the first place talking about this. I'm not a cicada doctor, but I certainly <laughs> am a dog and cat doctor. And basically, we know that pets are going to be curious about these bugs. So it's very important to realize that while they are big and they're ugly, and they certainly do have an environmental impact, they are not toxic to pets. A lot of people think of these as, in fact, a delicacy. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that around breakfast, but some people actually <laughs> eat these things. I'm not ready recommending that. But in any case, the problem for pets would be that if they're eating large quantities of these, that outside shell is not digestible and that can cause stomach upset. And if there's a lot of them uh, or if they're uh, having difficulty swallowing these things, it could cause a choking hazard, uh, be irritating to the digestive tract. So when you're out and about, I don't want you to be alarmed about a, a pet eating one or two of these. But if this is getting to be, hey, I got to scavenge and scrounge for all of these guys, you got to make sure that your pet's on a leash to keep them from going to town on it. Okay, so little to worry about with these 
ugly little creatures. Mm -hmm. But it kind of looks like a plague a little bit. <laughs> like that many, then the map, and then like it hasn't been all out since 18 something something. Right, right. Um, but it's good to know that they are just kind of like more of a nuisance and not a danger to our pets. Exactly. You know, plague in Egypt days. That was actually grasshoppers. And grasshoppers are not closely related to these. But um, this is not a plague. This is natural. They actually have a lot of uh, environmental um, uh, positives uh, that are there. Uh, so, you know, there's a couple summaries I want people to be aware of. There really is no toxicity or threat to pets unless they're eating too many of them. They do not sting or bite people or other animals. And uh, people might be tempted to reach for bug spray or uh, pesticides. These are not helpful. And of course, they're not necessary. These are very innocent creatures. Uh, and, and cicadas are, are beneficial to the ecology. Uh, they aerate the soil in their, in their burrowing. Um, the, they are food for a lot of the um, uh, predators that um, are hungry at, at this time of year, so it really helps in those populations. And egg laying actually results in a, just a natural tr uh, trimming or pruning of the trees. And like I said, all of those dying bugs, that's good nutrition for the environment. So look at the cicadas with interest, not fear, uh, but be careful about your pets going to town on too many of those. Okay, so judge cicadas by their heart posture and not how they look, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. okay. yeah, I'm sure there's something about the heart and a little fluid flow in their body. Something, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Visser. I really appreciate you. If you want to contact welcome. the pet vet, Dr. David Visser, you can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PETS-VETS, or you can always shoot him an email at mission at comcast.net. We'll be right back.